Hi, and good evening, everybody. Uh, it's your girl here, Cal Banner, your inspirational speaker and teacher on a video recording versus a live stream through Facebook. So thank you for hitting the play button on this day, whatever day it is that you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> this night, wherever it is you find yourself. Thank you so much for watching. But make sure you still uh, share and tag and like, just like you normally would if it was a live video uh, or live stream. Make sure that you're doing that, this tagging, the sharing, and the liking. So I wanted to join us today by video. Um, no reason in particular, but just something a little different, something uh, a little different via presentation. Um, because you know how sometimes when you go on live, the, the stream is bad and goes in and out. And, and then, you know, um, the, my energy level was in and out today as well. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to do a video instead today. I'm going to do a video versus going, going live. So uh, here we are. Here we are. Uh, nonetheless, the, 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 the protocol is still the same. And um, I'm still going to be encouraging all of us on today through the word of God. So... My encouraging word today is, is regarding the call. Have you answered the call? Have you answered the call? Hmm. So you probably wonder, well, what you talking about? What, what's the call? What call was I supposed to answer? Is my phone ringing? Should I be picking up that phone, answering the call? Uh, <laughs> is my FaceTime ringing? Should I be answering that call? Nope. That is not the call that I'm referring to. All right. I'm talking about the call from God. A call from God. And I know I'm joking and, and being and taking it lightly here in the beginning here, but this is a very serious thing that we have to uh, consider. Okay. When God prompts us, when God speaks to our heart to do a certain thing or directs us to do a certain thing, it is very important that we answer him. Okay. And, and, and when I say answer him, I'm talking about obeying whatever it is, whatever the instruction, whatever the leading is that he's given is, it's important that we answer and obey. Mm. Sometimes we may answer. <laughs> Let me straighten that out because sometimes we may answer, but the obedience is lacking. You know, the following what he's telling us to do is lacking. So not only do we need to answer, but we need to follow and we need to obey. Amen. Does that make sense? All right, so I want to start off, you know, the saying goes, there's nothing new under the sun. And that is so very true because even back in the book of Exodus, we have our, our, our uh, one of our, our patriarchs, okay? One of our, our great leaders uh, of all time um, having trouble with this very thing, answering the call. And I'm talking about Moses. I'm talking about Moses. Now, we all know who Moses is. Well, I shouldn't say we all, I shouldn't assume that. But Moses was a great leader. Moses was called to do a very uh, great thing for our history, <laughs> a huge thing for our history. And without giving it all away, I'm just going to go ahead and get to the scripture so that you can hear and see uh, what his call was and, and how that unfolded for, for Moses. OK, so I'm coming from the book of Exodus, chapter three, verses 10 through 12. And I am reading the New King James Version. Again, the scripture reading for your hearing now is Exodus chapter three, verses 10 through 12. And it says this. And this is God speaking. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Verse 11. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? And that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. So he said, I will certainly be with you. God said, I will certainly be with you. And this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Yeah, that's the book of Exodus chapter three, verse 10 through 12. So the call, the call for Moses God put it very, very plainly here. Come now, therefore, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Boom, the call. So this was during the time when um, the Israelites were enslaved to the Egyptians. And it was time for them to be freed according to, to God's will. So God called Moses to do just that, <laughs> to go to Pharaoh that he may bring God's people out of slavery, out of Egypt. So that's what God told Moses to do. And of course, you know, we're not talking about a couple few people. 
you know, not, not, you know, you're not just going to go get your cutting now, you know, out, for, out the county. You know what I'm saying? This is no, this is huge. <laughs> We're talking about a nation of people that Moses was called to deliver uh, out of uh, the Egyptians' hands. But <laughs> Moses, just like us sometimes, you know, we like, hold up, me, uh, me, me, okay. He says, who am I? Moses is saying, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? Now, Pharaoh is the king, the, the ruler of the land. And so Moses has his doubts. Who am I to go to him that I should bring the children of Israel uh, out of Egypt? And, 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 and God, he, you know, he, he, he works with us. And I love him for that because Lord knows I need to be worked with. <laughs> so he works with him and he says, so uh, I will certainly be with you. Mm. This is what God says in response to Moses's doubt, Moses's uncertainty, his unsure sureness of him, his own power, his own might, his own strength. God assured him and said, hey, I will certainly be with you. That's all we need. That could have ended the whole discussion. Moses could have went on to Pharaoh right there because God assured him that he will certainly be with him. Oh, hallelujah. Mm, come on, God. That is all we ever need is the presence of God to be with us, to be able to do precisely anything that he calls us to do. That's who we need is him. And, and, and that word alone will sustain us. And then I like also what God said. He took it a little further. He said, and this shall be a sign to you that I've sent you. He said, when you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. And I, I hope that we all caught that in our reading. Now, sometimes when God calls us to do something, we're not sure of what the outcome is going to be. And that's a lot of times is what deters us, what distracts us. We don't know if we're going to get rejected. We don't know if it's, it's actually going to be a success. We don't know if we're going to fail. We don't know if we're going to be received. We don't, we, there's a lot of things that we don't necessarily know. So that, that gives us that doubt, those questions. Who am I to do what it is that you told me to do? God, who am I? You know, that, that, those types of things, you know, allow us or, 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 or lead us to think in that fashion. However, God assured Moses so much more. He told him here in that last piece of scripture 12, he says, when you have brought the people out of Egypt, <laughs> did y'all catch that? When? when, so God sent Moses, God, God called Moses to deliver them, deliver him out. Now, Moses probably didn't understand. Okay. Is, is that really going to happen? But God gave him a, a, a more a, a potent word by telling him when you do it. In other words, it's going to happen. And this is how you know what's going to happen because you're going to serve me on this mountain. So it's a done deal. When God, hallelujah, come on, Holy Spirit. When God says a thing, it's a done deal. When God calls us to a thing, it is a done deal. We don't have to be fretful. We don't have to be worried. We don't have to be concerned. It is a done deal. Oh, yes, it is. In God, it is a done deal. Trust him in that. Trust him in that. Now, again, our humanness. Our humanness, our humanness gets in the way. Woo, it gets in the way. So we began to come up with excuses as to why uh, we sh aren't the one, shouldn't answer the call, can't answer the call. We're unable to answer the call. We, we have excuses or reasons as to why uh, this thing may not work with me, God. This thing may not work with me. Like I said, Moses our leader here, he did the very same thing. Like I said, in verse 11 of that passage, he said, who am I? Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? He didn't believe in himself. He didn't trust in himself. He didn't think that he had the wherewithal to, to complete the call, the mission, the commission that God had given him. And yes, he may have been right. He may, he's not in his own strength. He was not in his own strength able to do the thing. But with God, when God promises, I will be with you, that's all we ever need. Amen. Amen. And, and so there was some more dialogue that took place within, uh, between chapters three and four in the book of Exodus, where God was, you know, giving Moses what he needed in order to feel better about the call that he had given him. But even still, even with the conversation, even with the one-on-one -on -one with God, the one-on-one -on -one encouragement, Moses still found some things about himself, some, some uncertainties about himself that, that he felt wasn't enough to, to, 
allowed him to, to respond to this call. And in Exodus chapter four, verse one, Moses answered and said, but suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say the Lord has not appeared to you. <laughs> Man. So again, you know, like I said, dialogue has occurred and, and God has said, yes, you're the one, Moses. I'm sending you. Go do what I told you to do now. <laughs> Just like a parent, you know, go do it. But no, Moses comes back and says, well, all right. Okay. You said you're going to be with me. All right. Uh, but suppose they will not believe me. Or listen to me, God. Suppose I go to all these people saying, God has sent me, thus saith the Lord, that he has sent me. And they, and they say, <clears throat> yeah, right. The Lord has not appeared to you. So again, Moses is still pulling at reasons in his mind, reasons, aka excuses, uh, <laughs> as to why he shouldn't or he's not able, he can't fulfill the call. So first it was, he didn't think he was worthy. Who am I? And now he's saying, but what if they don't listen to me? You know, it, it, so it, he, he keeps coming up with things. And then <laughs> to top it all off further down in that chapter verse, uh, in verse 13 of chapter four of Exodus, Moses goes on to further say after, you know, God continually is talking to him, telling him, yes, you come on, you're doing it. He says, oh, my Lord, please send by the hand of whoever else you may send. In other words, oh, God, please not me, send somebody else. That, that's how Moses responded. Does any of that sound familiar to you? I know it sounds familiar to me, and I'm not saying because I heard it from somebody else. I'm saying it sounds familiar because I myself have responded to God in similar fashions. Amen. I have responded to God in doubt. Who, me? Oh, you can't be talking about me, God. So I delay. So I tarry answering the call. But don't you know, if you have any experience with God, he is not going to let you rest until you answer the call and follow and obey. How many knows that to be the truth? Because I definitely know that to be the truth more too many times than I, I, I care to admit. We can't run from God. When he asks us, first of all, <laughs> he prompts us. He may ask us. He may, he, he leads us. He guides us. He, he's a gentleman, but sometimes he got to keep reminding us who we are in him in order for us to get ourselves in gear. But like I said, I, 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 I can relate to Moses here. In, in scriptures, I, I, I myself have felt unworthy of, of the callings that God has given me in my life. I, 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 I feel that I'm unqualified, <laughs> excuse me, unqualified at times. You know what I mean? And there's been some times where I'm like, Lord, come on now. It got to be somebody else you, that can do this thing. Whatever it is that, you, you know, the thing that you don't want to do. <laughs> It got to be somebody else that that's that's a little mm -hmm, yeah a little bit more able than me yeah so we all can relate to those things we all can relate to those things but oh God forbid I, I, and 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 as I was looking through those scriptures you know they will all start with but Moses or but he said but suppose we have got to rebuke our butts yes we do we have to rebuke our butts because you know what. We can come up with a butt in a second, but God, um, my toe hurt today. You know, do I really have to go out there and, and, and minister, you know, to, um, you know, the homeless on the corner? I broke my nail, my God, but God, I, you, we, we need to rebuke our butts because we'll throw a butt in the sentence in a second. When God has said, go, then we want to turn around with a butt. Uh, 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 uh. That ain't going to work. We need to rebuke that in the name of Jesus. No buts. No buts. <laughs> the only but I'm going to say is but God. Because <laughs> he's able to give me what I need to do what it is that he has called me to do. That's the only but we need is but God. <laughs> yeah, he will show up on our behalf. He will empower us to do precisely what he has called us to do. So rebuke the butts because all of that ain't nothing but a, a, a strategy of, of Satan to keep us from doing what it is that he's called us to do. And, and when that happens, the kingdom is affected adversely. The kingdom is affected when we're not walking in the callings that God has given us. We are subtracting, hallelujah, from the kingdom, amen, that we are to be edifying the kingdom, not subtracting from it. Let us be obedient. Let us follow the way we should. The enemy is tricky like that. 
He, he will deter us, make us feel unqualified and scared and, and unworthy of the call. Rebuke that, but, but I'm unqualified, but I'm scared, God, but I'm not worthy of this, but I just don't want to. Ha, rebuke it all in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And let our response be more so like the following. The following gentleman in Matthew, uh, uh, the first passage of scripture I'm going to read is out of, out of chapter four, verses 18 through 22. Now this time Jesus is walking through on the scene. And so here we go. It says this, and Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Verse 20, they immediately left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he, Jesus, saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending nets. He, Jesus, called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. Come on, come on, y'all catching that? Y'all catching that? Yeah. And, and, and further on in, in Matthew chapter nine, verse nine, as Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office. And he said to them or said to him, follow me. So he arose and followed him. Ah, I want y'all to catch that in, in, in the scriptures in chapter four, it talks about the, the, the men immediately, immediately following Jesus Christ. No questions asked. You know, no, 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 no. I'm um, thinking about what it is that I was doing because these men were were in the midst of of their daily work. You know, this was these are the things that they did for a living. They were fishermen, and Jesus said, "Come on, I'm going to make you fishers of men." They say, "Well, God, so what? what? Hmm, let me think about that, Jesus. So, what exactly does that mean, and how will that end? And then, how am I going to help?" Uh, you know, support my family and stuff after, you know, I follow you. They didn't mm -mm. immediately praise God. Again, the call came and they responded. Imme Come on, Holy Spirit. They responded immediately. Lord, help us in this. He, they, they responded immediately. L likewise, Matthew in, in chapter nine did the same thing. He was sitting at the tax office doing his thing. And he got up, arose, and followed him after Jesus said, come on and follow me. No questions asked, no hesitation, no buts got in the way of these men following the call of Jesus Christ. Nothing got in their way. They just went because Jesus said so. Let that be our heart, praise God. Let that be our, uh, our disposition toward Jesus, toward the call of God. Now, because there may be several things that we're called to do. There may be tasks in our lives that we have been given. There may be burdens for us to have to bear, but let us, ha, come on God, let us respond with, with urgency. Let us respond immediately. Let us respond without a but at all that will help, uh, that will deter us in any type of way. Let us move forward in faith like the men did here in the book of Matthew. Because if God calls you, if he calls you, if he calls me, guess what? We're qualified. We're worthy. We're, we're able to do exceedingly and uh, we're able to do it. Okay. We're able to complete the work of God according to how he has called us. Praise God. I, I, I like it in the book of Timothy, the book of Second uh, Timothy actually talks about uh, uh, our gifts and make sure that we're stirring them up because God does that. God will call us to do a thing and stir up our gift, but more so than that, to fight some of the butts that we run into in our own vernacular, Second uh, uh, Timothy verse one chapter, or excuse me. Second Timothy chapter one, verse seven says this for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. So keep in mind when we are uh, prompted and called by God and, and, and prompted in our spirits to move in a certain direction, we're called in a certain way. Don't be scared. Come on. Let us know that we have not been given a spirit of fear by God. He will never have never done that. So if any time we're feeling fearful again, it's time to rebuke and bind that spirit of fear. Amen. And move on immediately because God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. We have peace. 
when we're going, when we're walking, when we're uh, 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 answering and following the call of God. Amen. I'm also reminded Joshua, the same thing. So, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, after Moses' tenure, here comes Joshua to take take up the reign, take up the courts. And he was a young man. So, of course, he was he probably had some nerves and some 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 fears as well going on, taking on the call that God had given him. He, he was a mighty man of God. And, and same thing. God called him, but he told him, listen, I will not leave you nor forsake you. This is uh, Joshua chapter one, verses five through six. Actually, I'm gonna start from the top of five. Uh, Joshua uh, chapter one, verses five and six says, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Come on, so I will be with you. I love that. So I will be with you. I want us to take hold of that right there. So I will be with you. I want us to take hold of the fact that whatever God, God calls us to, he is going to be with us through. Whatever God, God calls us to, he is going to be with us through it all. Amen. So be encouraged by that. The scripture goes on to say, I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage for to this people, you shall divide as an inheritance the land, which I swore to your fathers to give to them. So again, he got called to do a great thing. He got called to do a great thing, um, but God promised to be with him. And then God encouraged him not to be fearful, but have good courage and be strong. Amen. Amen. So, so long as we're with him, with God, we're aligned with God. We, we have no choice but to be of good courage because we know whose side we're on. Amen. So it's important for us when we hear the call, heed to it. Amen. Immediately. Heed to it immediately. Rebuke the butts that may come along and be strong, be of good courage uh, 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 and, and know that God is with us. Amen. Amen. So I ask you again. Have you answered the call? Have you answered the call? I want us to think about that. The thing that God has been tugging. Come on, God. The thing that God has been tugging on our hearts about. Mm. Have we been reluctant? Have, have we gone the other way? Have we run? <laughs> Thinking about Jonah going the other way. <laughs> versus to the land of Nineveh as, as God told him to. Ooh, things could happen quite drastically when we decide to go the other way in the opposite direction. Read the book of Jonah and find that out. My goodness. We don't want to go in the opposite direction. We don't want to stand still either. We want to follow immediately. Arise immediately and do what God says to. Amen. I hope this word has been an encouragement to you. If so, Please, 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 please share it along. Share it with a friend. Share it with a family member. Share it with an enemy. We all can be blessed by the word of God. Amen. All right, you guys, take care. I will see you the next time I see you. Love you with the love of Christ and answer your call. Amen. God bless you.